system, the one to play with Rob, the extraordinary video robot, batteries not included. He helps you tackle even the toughest challenge. Will you be the first to raise the incredibly accurate Zapper and play games like Duck Hunt or action-packed Hogan's Alley and high-flying Kung Fu, each sold separately? Will you be the one to experience the Nintendo Entertainment System? Comes with Rob, Zapper, Control Deck, two controllers, Gyromite, and Duck Hunt. The Nintendo Entertainment System. I never heard of it. What is it? So the Famicom, which is the Japanese version of the NES, came out in 1983. It sold great in Japan because Japan did not have the same crash that we did. So Nintendo thought, hey, I want to release this in America. The only problem was the video game crash of 83, 84 knocked out the home console video game market almost entirely. You had a whole lot of people who got very badly burned, you know, buyers from retail stores, um, and they didn't want to take a chance on, on on video games. And Nintendo really had to roll the dice. Like they had to actually, they, they test marketed it in New York, and they had to go to these guys and say, we will assume all the risk. Nintendo had to basically say, whatever you don't sell stores, we'll, we'll buy back. When we launched in, in New York area in, in uh, late fall of 85, it was really fun. A ton of work because we were importing all of this new product, which we had to distribute all over New York and New Jersey area. They would go around to department stores, to malls, to FAO Schwartz stores, and they would personally, these employees, set up these displays and demonstration units and actively try to demonstrate and sell the system to people just walking by. Here, try this game console out. Try this system out. Originally, Nintendo of America wanted to do a smaller market, but the Japan head at the time said, no, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do one in freaking New York City, one of the <laughs> biggest markets in the United States. So in trying to sell it to Americans, they had to think of a new way to market it in the sense that you know, hey consumers, this is not a video game, this is something different. Test marketing the, the NES was, was a, a big task, and the reason being is there was such disparate views on video games. I mean, the kids always loved video games. At the time, video games were bad words. You did not want to be affiliated with anything to do with video games. So Nintendo had to market themselves carefully so they weren't thrown in with that bunch. So they didn't call it a video game, they called it a Nintendo Entertainment System. It's much more than just a video game console. Look, it's got a robot. Rob was used to market the NES as something more sophisticated than just a video game. It's like a toy and it's like a robot and it's from the future. So Nintendo said, look guys, this isn't a video game system. It's a toy. It's got a gun. It's got a robot. This is a toy, guys. This is awesome. And as silly as that sounds, it worked. As cool as Rob looked, it only supported two games, Gyromite and Stack Up. So you're Professor Hector in Gyromite, and you have lots of dynamite that's going to go off in a lot of time. That's good for kids. And you have to get to the dynamite beforehand. And these little, little lizard guys named Smix that come after you try to kill you. And he had these platforms that would go on each side, these little attachments. So there would be a gyro spinner and then the gyro, and it would sit on top of these things that would activate the buttons, which would open gates in Gyromite. Really ingenious and cool because it helped market Nintendo as an entertainment system and a toy versus a video game, but the problem was setting up and using this guy was not easy at all. No. I always enjoyed playing it just with the controllers because it's a lot faster. Like, I would have the two controllers in my hands because if you have to wait for Rob, Rob's like, mm, Poor guy. He was an amusing novelty that got it, that got the system on the store shelves, but as soon as people got tastes of games that didn't require the tedious setup of a robotic operating buddy, uh, he was relegated to closets where he gathered dust. But luckily we had this arsenal of 16 games of which probably 10 or more of them were really good games. And then on top of that we had Rob the Robot and the Zapper the Light Gun and those two things made it seem like the technology was really different and new, so it was actually a slam dunk to sell it. This is a zapper. Light gun came with the NES, and you play Duck Hunt with this. And Duck Hunt, while coming off as a simple tech demo, is a lot of fun. A pretty fascinating piece of technology when you think about it. It basically times out uh, these flashes on the screen. And if you miss them, there is the one thing that everyone remembers about Duck Hunt, which is the dog. That dog. That smug little look on his face when those Ducks fly away and he pops up and he laughs at you. The dog is cruel and he mocks you 
and you cannot have your revenge on the dog, you just have to endure. Duck Hunt had three modes, one duck, two ducks, and clay pigeons, which I actually thought were clouds when I was a kid. Now you can also control the duck using the second controller. Correct. Yeah, and that was like the first kind of like cooperative competitive gaming, because like you're both playing together, but like one's trying to survive, the other one's shooting at them. But the duck would always lose because you press the gun against the screen and just fire. Nintendo Zapper? Pew, pew, pew. Who wouldn't want to play that? This would become the base sort of model for every video game controller afterwards. They'd all would incorporate at least two buttons, a start button, and a control pad. Everyone afterwards. I mean, just the way they infiltrated the culture uh, so soon afterwards was that you weren't playing video games, you were playing Nintendo. It was like Kleenex or Q-tips. You know, the brand was the product. The technology had, had progressed enough that the characters were more decipherable as, as people or animals. The graphic superiority of the system was like, you know, nothing we had before. It was an 8-bit system, and there were 8-bit systems before, but nothing looked like the Nintendo. The games were marketed by actually how they looked and how they were. And Nintendo was very careful in doing this. If you go back to the Atari era, to the Intellivision era, era you look at the box art of all these games, it doesn't show what the actual game is. It shows these painted, abstract drawings, and that's not what the game is. Nintendo came up with this brilliant idea. Let's make it so only cartridges made by Nintendo can be played in the machine. The Atari kind of showed what could happen if they weren't really careful about how they controlled the system. So Nintendo had a strict product approval policy, and they would only allow a certain number of games per developer per year. Once it was released nationwide in 86, you're about three years removed from the video game crash. So it's almost a new semi-generation of kids that maybe they never had an Atari. They were just too young for that, like I was. But now you see something called the NES, and all of a sudden, this is new again. All of a sudden, home console video games are now kickstarted again. And Nintendo, in accomplishing the impossible, basically, proved, um, and this is very important, that video games were not dead. And all we did was just confirm what we thought, which is that the kids were going to continue to love them because they were great games, and the parents would see it as something radically new and be willing to maybe put it under the Christmas tree.